welcome again to a new year and um, I'm so pleased to be back hosting LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. My name is Brona Morgan and it is an absolute pleasure to be speaking to um, a guest today that I guess really needs no introduction, especially in southwestern Ontario, but not a Londoner. But definitely well, I grew had up in London. So I can oh, give you that part. Perfect. Yeah. Then perfect. Yeah. So completely appropriate for the show. But we we love our neighbors to the south in St. Thomas, I, and I am just so pleased to have with me today Joe Preston, Mayor of St. Thomas, former uh, federal representative for the riding of Elgin, Middlesex, London, yes. and entrepreneur I don't know there's so many titles I can I oh thanks yeah and yeah. also stand-up comedian newly <laughs> engaged yes thank you person. thank you Brona, for congratulations. that congratulations uh, and thank you for letting me share I should have let you share that first no, that's okay New Year's Eve I um, I, I presented uh, Stephanie with her ring and and asked her if she would marry me and she said yes and so um, sometime in 2023 we're gonna make that happen now um, not the first marriage for myself or her, and so we've got to figure out what that looks like. But we're both pretty excited. It's a it, it, it's a whole new thing. And thank you for congr for the congratulations. There sure has been a lot of them. So yeah. people like us both. That's, well, we're a weird couple, but I, yeah. I, I am so well. Like I, everybody has got their own uh, yep. weird. It's good that you can be, you know, you have the right kind of weirdness for each other. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> I have known you for a long time, but also I've done volunteer work with your fiance, Stephanie. Right. Wonderful human being. So oh, we worked yes. together being patient partners at, at St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital. Yes. And I know she's a uh, YouTube sensation, I think, or is she on oh, other she social does, media? She does uh, more TikTok, TikTok. Uh, YouTube, and uh, a lot of lives on other social media like uh, Facebook. So she, she does peer counseling. She herself is bipolar. And so she's been great for the mayor to learn mental health and what how mental health can be better served. Um, but she's great with not only local, because she's done peer support locally in a group with, with CMHA, but now internationally, or, or, or certainly online. So wherever her, where, wherever people want to tune in, but it's a great uh, question about how to live with uh, what she calls someplace on the bipolar spectrum, because it truly is. And uh, it makes her a far better person, mentally also, by doing peer support. Oh, giving back is, I don't know, it, it's she really... She has better days when she's doing peer support than when she's not. So, Absolutely. Right? Look, we all know that it, you know, with, with mental health in our lives, some days are better than others. Mm -hmm. right? She puts almost every day to be better in my life, um, and so I try to help her back with that too, and, and she's um, having a lot of fun. Right. Yeah, and she's she's a really cool person. Like we have a lot in common in terms of right. like she's a athlete, and she's yep. all. I, I I guess I forgot that she used to be a singer as well. Yeah, she had her own band for for a number of years. But somebody who's bipolar just can't spend till two o'clock in the morning out in bars singing. She was right. like, uh, and she did a number of huge events as a singer. The the fantasy of lights in Niagara Falls on, at, at New Year's is is one of the her favorite <laughs> things to reminisce about and the different stars she's met. But she's more down to earth than that. She's from Merlin, Ontario, which is outside of Chatham in, in Chatham, Kent. And I, in part of my stand-up comedy routine, I say, I love this woman from the minute she told me she got her first car from her tomato picking money. <laughs> so she grew up in rural Ontario and, and, and has never really left it in her heart. So we, we we like to take care of the communities we're in, and St. Thomas is, is having a lot of fun with us right now. Well, St. Thomas is very well served by its mayor, who is, such, I guess, one of the greatest cheerleaders I've ever, <laughs> um, I guess, encountered right. in terms of their love for a city. Right. So um, I don't even know where to start. Like, your political background, but also your entrepreneurial background. Sure. I, I didn't even know you grew up in London. So maybe we can take like the, the five minute route right, to how you that. got to where you got where okay. you are today. Great, I, uh, I, uh, I grew up in, in West London um, <laughs> and uh, on Mount Pleasant. Uh, ended up going to Banting High School the first year it opened. So if anybody wants to figure out my age, that's a pretty good one. It's the first year it opened. Um, 
uh, at that in, in that run didn't finish high school but ended up working uh, in the restaurant business I, I went to work uh, with Little Caesars for a little while and then uh, uh, we my first own pizza company and and then came back to London uh, that was up in Port Elgin in King Carden and came back to London and opened uh, uh, the, the newly opened Wendy's that was here. It was like the seventh Wendy's in Canada and that was 42 years ago uh, and uh, have been with them ever since. Be, uh, worked corporately, became the director of training and then decided I wanted to come back to London and they said, how about we sell you the store in St. Thomas? And I said, okay, it's, it's, it, 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 it's not very good but we'll take it we'll, and, and we did it. and. Uh, uh, really then have been 32, 33 years the franchisee of the Wendy's in St. Thomas and over time had more and Boston Pizza and some other things and have now really through this whole becoming mayor down to just one business and it's a very busy, busy Wendy's. But And uh, then uh, I was a member of parliament for from 2004 till 2012 almost, so 11 and a half years, no. 2015, so 11 and a half years, four elections. Um, took a couple years off, thought I was retiring, thought that's <laughs> what I was doing. Look, at, you're old enough, Joe, stop working. Um, and it didn't work. I, I, I had to get up and do something every day and a number of people approached me about running for mayor in 2018. I did, and uh, this now my second term as mayor of the city of St. Thomas. Ta-da. <laughs> That was, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how you got that all in in that <laughs> short span of time. So um, I, just I, we found out in the conversation just that we were having just before mm -hmm. we started recording today that we got into politics around the same time. Yes, even though you were yeah, doing almost a, about a year apart, but almost the same thing, yes. And to be involved with politics for this length of time, I was just commenting, you, it's like you're born to it. Like you actually seem like it's giving you more energy and you're just, like you don't seem like it's getting you down. Like you still have this enthusiasm for yes. politics, which is just so, I think it's really rare and wonderful to see. I'm not sure it's the, it's the that politics can get you down. It, 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 you can let the results get you down. Yeah. And if you don't, then you move forward because you've made new friends. You and I, I mean, we're not, we wouldn't normally, I mean, <laughs> if you followed our political patterns, be, be friends at all. And yet I jumped at the opportunity when you called because I, I love having conversations with you. And, and I've spent most of my life making friends that way. Yeah. And they weren't always wearing the same team uniform. All oh, right. Right. And I am, um, uh, well, Glenn Pearson, another great person here in, here in London, and I are great friends, but we weren't on the same team in, in Ottawa either, right? And yeah. so it, uh, Steve Peters, the, the former Speaker of the Ontario House, who was the m member of provincial parliament in St. Thomas, I count him as one of my best friends, but he wasn't on my team either, right? It's about keeping friendships, agreeing as you found in politics, agreeing on the 90% that we all agree on. Right. And, and then let's negotiate the other 10. Let's talk about how we can maybe get part way in, in, in some of it. When I was leaving Parliament, I think it was the Hill Times did an interview with me and I said, look, this is, this is the place to make friends. There's 308 men and women in those days, 308 men and women. I said, you know, there isn't four people in here I wouldn't have over for dinner. And at least two of them are conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly a bunch of conservatives came up to me over the next couple of days and say, am I one of those? Am I, right, right, right. But for the most part, you make friends with whoever and why ever. Um, Jack Layton and I were very good friends off scenes. Uh, we went to the gym together at Parliament. Jack would work out and I'd sit around and talk. And so <laughs> that worked out well for me. Um, but. but you know, he, he, he had a search for knowledge the same as you or, or I do. He wanted to know about, tell me about St. Thomas, Joe. Tell me about uh, the automotive people and, you know, what's going on and... and, and, and well, the commonalities right. are this desire to, make to serve. Right. And, but, uh, but also this desire to serve, too. I yes, think, like, there, there's clearly. so much more common ground between people who get into public service right. than there really is that, you know, when you watch it maybe at, on... TV or in like when you see question period and it seems so adversarial but uh, like oh, behind theater. the scenes it's so <laughs> yeah. like we really are working towards right. common goals which is making the country the province the city your, the your municipality little, part of it 
a better place. Absolutely. I always said that every, I, I met no one who went to parliament or became even a, a, a municipal politician that didn't do it for altruistic reasons. They did it because they wanted to help, to serve, to do something better. So they did. No, that doesn't make their altruistic reasons the same as mine. Both are good and both things will work, but we will occasionally have to negotiate ideas as much as party policies. And so I just that you know, that's really hard to do if you're not friends. Right. Right? Uh, I already dislike you because you're a conservative. <laughs> or I already dislike you because you're in another party. Well, wait, let's, let's start fresh. Right. right? right? And, and talk about, what'd you do? How did you get here? Were you an entrepreneur? Were you a business person? Where did you go to school? And we, and we find so many things we have in common with people. It's, and as, as I said earlier, it's exactly why I think municipal politics is so much fun. I can't wait to hear more about what's going on in municipal politics okay. with you, but we do have to take a little break. Okay. So Great. please stay with us. We're going to really now get into the details about what's been going on in St. Thomas and right. what's, I guess, your goals maybe for the sure. new year and the new term. So please stay with us. We'll have more with Mayor Joe Preston after this. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Carbon monoxide is a deadly gas you can't see, smell, or taste. Homes with fuel burning appliances and or attached garages must have working CO alarms installed outside all sleeping areas. Don't let the silent killer get you. Install working CO alarms today. action on Rogers TV. We have so many amazing storylines in our show. So it's called Find Your Hero. It starts with uh, the Little Mermaid segment where you have uh, Ariel transform from uh, mermaid to human 11 meters above the ground. So it's really impressive. And then of course we have all the other heroes like Moana with Maui on the ice. We have Rapunzel trying to find the lanterns with Flynn. And also we have the Beauty and the Beast segment where she, all her friends from the castle will be there. And then also of course First, we have our frozen family. So you can go on DisneyOnIce.com and then you can get your tickets there. Uh, I just really hope I'll see all of you guys there. And it's a great show and we're so ready to be in London and bring the Disney magic to you guys. Welcome back to LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Brona. I do remember the name of my show. I actually made that mistake before. And I'm here with my friend and uh, St. Thomas Mayor Joe Preston, who um, I guess we have some laughs together. So we you do. wouldn't judge me for making a mistake about the Not name. Not at all. <laughs> well, you should see me. Yeah. That's... Okay, so let's talk more about. St. Thomas, talk to us about, you know, what's what's new, what's happening this year, maybe goals, what's going on? Well, it, first of all, it's, there's an incredible amount of growth happening in St. Thomas, but that just mimics what's also happening in Southern Ontario. Yeah. St. Thomas is growing faster than any other community in Southern Ontario, but connected with London mm -hmm. and all of the smaller communities around St. Thomas and London, we have to work together. Um, you know, we, we've got a couple new employers coming on board, the Amazon, the new Amazon facility near London, between halfway between London and St. Thomas, the new Maple Leaf Foods plant that's in South London. But when, when the Maple Leaf fellows were down, I said, you know, I can drive from my house in St. Thomas quicker than anybody can drive from their house in London. And they didn't know that, mm -hmm. right? In general terms, in the past, whenever there's been a large employer whether it was the ford plant or, or anyone else one third of the people are from st thomas one third of the employees are from london and the other third are from a very large 60 mile radius around right. us if we don't think we're together and this is a former mayor holder and i as, as good friends talked about this a lot that if we don't think we're economic region 
we'll never succeed. We have to be able to share each other's successes and help the other person with their successes. So we really took that on. So St. Thomas is doing it on, it on in its own right, but can't do it without the success of, of the rest of Ontario or the rest of Southern Ontario. So there's some big projects we have to work on. It certainly is with the growth we're having and the growth that London is having, we have to have housing. Housing seems to be a, a number one issue, and we, I made a pledge this year, we'll do 500 houses each year over the next term of this council, and I know that Mayor Morgan here has made a, a similar thing, and we're talking to each other, what does that mean? How do we get that? How do we get way more of these big buildings to make it from a density point of view? We also have to ensure that everybody who can work, works. We've, we've got a lot of jobs right now that we right. need to fill. And that's one of the jobs as the mayor of St. Thomas I've been looking at is how do we ensure that those that can work are working to prove to industry and other manufacturers and commercial entities coming to our communities that we have the workforce. So that's, that, that's big job number two, right? We have to, you know, grow, uh, in, in all the neat things that cities have to do, whether it's water or wastewater or roads or all of those things, and we have to make sure that growth happens so that, so that growth will happen. So those have been my jobs over the first four years as council. I've had an incredible council to work with. Um, they are the best, and six out of eight ran in the last election, and all six of them won. And two new councillors who have been lifelong friends with me um, took the other two spots. I, I couldn't have dreamed for a better council. When we look around Southern Ontario, not everybody got returned that wanted the job. Yes. And, and, and the citizens of St. Thomas said, hey, we like what you're doing, come on back. And so that's given us a bit of permission to move forward on some housing projects that we might have taken another year but now we're doing them. And we'll continue to say, let us know when we don't have permission anymore, but we're gonna take what you said to us and, and carry on. That's wonderful. So very collaborative council that you have right exactly. now. So it just avoids the problems with just like bickering and you know, that we see sometimes between different you know, po political groups, whether it's uh, city council or yep. even you know, in the various levels of parliament. So that gives you an opportunity to really get things done. So housing on one, is one big one, right. um, you know, making sure that the workforce is matched with ready to grow. The, exactly. Any other hot issues for you? Look, because of the growth, we keep calling the whole package smart growth. Mm -hmm. um, St. Thomas continues to grow at a at a rapid pace, and uh, this census will show that we've we've grown at that way again. So when you can think of anything that it takes, well, maybe a couple more parks, maybe we, we have uh, kilometers of paved trails and we have, we have a, a number of other things. We just wanna say, let's do more before we're too busy to do more. So let's do everything that we can do on a growth cycle of St. Thomas. Let's grow as, as fast as we can. We've, we've added some new transit pieces uh, to our, our market. St. Thomas was a small community when we first formed council four years ago, and it didn't have transit on Sundays, and it didn't have transit past 6.30 at night. Interesting. Isn't that, you know, that's wow. the growth thing. So we said, okay, immediately, got to have those. Yeah. Won't say it's perfect, and it's not. We could really, if, if there was a, bushel basket of, of dollars, we could do more, but now yes. we're looking at how do we do it better, right. smarter. And we have to connect London and St. Thomas particularly, the small communities around us after that as quickly as possible. But we've got two major communities in Southern Ontario that it's easier for me to get to Toronto from St. Thomas than it is to get to London from St. No Thomas. Doubt, right? And that doesn't make sense. No. And so we've been, um, Mayor Holder and I both sat on a, on a community task force with Minister Mulroney on transportation about local transit. There's a lot of good local transit that's kind of now out there. The one we didn't fix yet is London to St. Thomas, and we will. Whether that should be a go bus situation, we think that's probably right, or something else. But people need to be able to get back to work, back to school, from London to St. Thomas. Uh, we're back not down that far to away. the Horton Market, yeah, which absolutely. I love, and right. the wonderful downtown, yeah. and Pinafore Park. Yeah, so, and, the, and the festivals and stuff that <clears> take oh place gosh. in St. Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, so I, we, we don't have a ton of time right. left, and so okay. I'm not sure how often you get a chance to watch LDN ONT TV, but we right. always end our 
broadcast with a conversation with a young person. Perfect. So today we're going to be talking to Akira, who has lived in Toronto. She's also right. lived in Niagara Falls, and she's back living here in London now. So, and for any other young people that are watching, so you know, somebody who's got a political history like you yeah. have well, thanks. and you're still saying staying so enthusiastic about it and like I was saying before that's rare so can you give some words of encouragement to young people who maybe they're thinking about getting involved with politics or maybe they're turned off politics or any ways that you know to engage young people with the kind of issues that are important to their community and to, you know, I like to give them a voice. So what would you say to these young well, people? Well, exactly that, and that, and Bruno, that's exactly the, 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 the way I would say it. I didn't get, I didn't be get involved in politics and then found out I was, I was happy to help the community. I, I spent years as a community supporter, whether it was with the United Way or the Chamber of Commerce or the Downtown Development Board or, or Second Stage Housing, I mean, a number of passionate projects that I had. From that, somebody came to me one day and said, you should run, right? <laughs> okay, all right. And that's what I would say to any young person. Be passionate about something. Find something you just love to work on. You like to read? Go volunteer at the library, right? Go volunteer at a local uh, theater. Uh, do, do the types of things that make you happy, make you smile. Don't just go because you're supposed to volunteer. Find the ones that make you extremely smiley on your way home from the event. From that, you'll decide. You, your own life will, will, will go in the direction it needs to based on how happy you've made yourself volunteering or being part of the community. If that turns into pol political decisions because what you saw wasn't good, Go out and go out and do it. Go out and at least share it and, and take it take it, share your your ideas so that someone else can use them. It doesn't matter who gets the idea, right? Go out and do it. That would be my biggest thing. Is if you if you don't find yourself smiling, leave that job. If you don't if you if you don't find yourself smiling, leave that volunteer opportunity. Nobody said you had to stay, right? But when but you find something, yourself, but it's definitely working for you because oh, yeah. you've done a lot of smiling today. Sixty-eight later, sixty-eight <laughs> years later, I, I I can't find fault with what I do. It, it's good to get up and go do it. Hey, there's bad days and there's good days, but for the most part, you you feel you're accomplishing something that other people will enjoy for a long time into the future, and it makes a big difference. Oh well, thank you so much. I'm that, happy. that that wonderful wonderful message for everybody. Great conversation. I yes. wish we had more time, but we do have to take another right. break. Hope you come back and visit again. Oh, I will. Just Anytime you ask. Especially when we get the bus going, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> so Mayor Joe Preston, thank you for being Thanks. here. Please stay with us. We've got some more LDN ONT TV after the break. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. I did it. I need it. Hero gave it. And I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift of life. You'll be glad you did. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Mario Elia, and I'm the host of a new show here on Rogers TV that we're calling Keeping London Healthy with Dr. Mario. So tune in Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and we'll see you then. Wednesday night, national games are back on Rogers TV. Watch all the goals, saves, and hits every Wednesday night starting at 7 p.m. You're watching Rogers TV, London. Welcome back to LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. Just had a great conversation and really um, encouraging conversation with Mayor Joe Preston from St. Thomas. And now I get to introduce you to my friend Akira. So Akira is the person we were chatting about a little bit um, that Joe was encouraging to do the things that make her happy in her life and, you know, 
if, you, if it doesn't make you happy, don't do it. Akira, how old are you? I forget. I'm 10. You're 10. And yes. you go to Prince Charles, did you say? Yes. Prince. So how's Prince Charles going this year so it's far? It's going very good. But some, it's just, it's, I don't really like school. But the thing that I like about school the most is gym. <laughs> that, but there you go. So yeah. there's something that makes you happy yeah. about school. Yeah. So when Joe was talking, you know, about the things you get involved with and how you can do nice things for people in the community. I know you guys do a lot of mm. nice things for your family and other people in the community. What's your favorite thing to do that's just kind of makes people's day? Um, uh, make jokes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but sometimes... Uh, the, I like doing, making food for people that when they're sad, like for example, like if I see like my mom in the living room just like sad, just on the, her phone or something, I just go ahead, just with anything, like if there's just like cheese and crackers or something, I just make it. <laughs> yeah. And that's such a nice thing yeah. to do because everybody needs to eat, right? Yeah. So that's a simple thing that anybody yeah. can do. And even if it is... Speaking as a mom who has to do a lot of cooking, like yeah. if somebody brought me some cheese and crackers, that means a lot to me. <laughs> so, yeah. um, children, if you're out there, <laughs> cheese and crackers would be great. <laughs> Tell me one more thing. So I, you, you know I'm an artist. Yeah. I love to draw. I love to paint. I yeah. love to teach. You're an artist as well. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite um, materials to draw with, and what's your favorite subject? Um, so, I don't know. Um... Well, the materials I use is mostly just um, pen and a pencil because it's I do sketching on my sketchbook, and um, yeah, my favorite like subject thing to like do for like art or something is um, I used to do dance, but I just draw now just for fun because I think it's like very fun. Like when you're bored or something, you can just do something and you can like make stories with like the character just like right beside like the like words or something like comics kind of yeah awesome <laughs> so it sounds like you have a lot of potential things you could do when you get bigger so yeah. cooking art maybe stand up comedy <laughs> right <laughs> so lots of great ideas yeah. i'm looking forward to seeing what happens in the new year hopefully we get to spend more time together and maybe you can join me for some art projects yes because of I loved course it. oh i'm so excited <laughs> so did you have fun was it scary nope excellent so anybody who is watching we always love to end our show with a young person so if you're a young person you want to reach out to me i would love to have you on your sh on ldn ont tv just like akira to chat about what you're passionate about or anything that you have going on in the community that you want to share so thank you akira yes. thank you again to mayor joe preston for being here and thank you viewers for tuning in we hope you enjoyed this episode and you'll tune in again next week for more ldn ont tv the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. preview is back and viewers are loving it.